Okay, so I've simplified a new file. I've cropped it into a square, and I have three layers that I think I can use as assets. I have one character layer puppet that I haven't altered at all yet. I have one background, and then I have one layer of texture on top that I can play with. That's all from my assignment one. And what I can do immediately is start to exaggerate this texture a little bit. I can just duplicate it on itself and see if I want it any um, stronger than it already is. Right? This was combining a lot of the textures. Because subtlety isn't always rewarded in, in animation. You know, you want to, to be kind of bold with your, your different assets that you're arranging. So what do I know from my sketch? I know that I want eventually the sun to come out. So that little sparkle there can be helpful for that. I also know from my sketch oops, that I want it to get cold and for clouds to come in and get kind of overtaken with ice. So how can I make the best use of this texture? Well, let's see. Maybe I can alter this asset a little bit, duplicate and stretch more of these misty clouds. These are all from texture overlays. I can always bring more in, but these are just what I had for assignment one anyway. and then merge them together. So just the idea of environmental things happening. I can even kind of warm it up, go to image adjustments and play with its color balance. Make it more on the yellow side. And then same thing. For the landscape, I can warm that up. So I want it to look kind of bright and sunny to begin with. So color balance. Even warm up the shadows a little bit. And then I can always play with the other direct adjustments, just like we have in our other composites. You can play with the midtones. Brighten those up a little bit, just overall in the environment. All right, now this is going to assignment three. How do I make my creature? Well, I want a shadow underneath my creature and I want my creature's colors to match, right? So there's a few things I can do. I'm going to do it with a duplicate. So I'm going to hit Command J or Action Key J to make a duplicate of my creature on top. So I can always compare it with what's underneath. And first I'm going to adjust its color balance. I'm just going to do kind of simple things. So I'm going to take the blue down in the shadows and in the highlights. I'm going to take the blue down a little bit and add more red. Maybe it, and then in the mid-tones, yeah, maybe a little less green, a little more towards magenta. Okay, so that's color balance, and I can see how it was kind of green and bluish before, but in this lighting condition, especially in the foreground here, that starts to match a little bit better. Next, what I can do is make a new blank layer. 
this new blank layer I'm going to call, this is a new skill, an overlay. And this overlay layer, I'm going to say edit fill with middle gray at 100% normal mode. And you can see it has the, the texture on top of it. I'll just turn that off for now. Now, that is now at normal mode at 100% opacity. But if I change that overlay middle gray layer to overlay mode, it disappears entirely. But with this overlay layer, I'm going to mark it with a color. So it's a skill I want you to know. And it's what we would have done in assignment three. With that overlay layer, I can use dodge and burn. And what it will do, I'll make it nice and big. So I always use burn with a large brush that's soft at the mid-tones at an exposure of less than 30. So I'll just show you. If I burn on the overlay layer, what it's actually burning is that gray. So if I change it to normal mode, you'll see what I'm doing. So I'm burning the gray. The more I burn it, the darker it will get. But because it's set to overlay mode, not normal mode, it's going to affect everything behind that layer. So it's a great way to add shadows that are non-destructive. Right. So I'm just going to fill it with even gray again to get me started. And then I decide, OK, where do I want shadows? Well, I want shadows actually on top of my creature because the, the lighting is a little severe, right? So I want to burn the shadows on my creature so it, it kind of matches the light direction of the environment. So his feet are going to be a lot more in shadow. And I can go from midtones to highlights, and I can burn the mid the highlights as long as I keep it nice and soft and not too strong. It will be pretty subtle. Now the, the limitations are, you see how I have that really bright highlight on my creature? An overlay layer can't touch that because the overlay layer can only dodge and burn from middle gray. So again, if I turn it to normal mode, you'll see what I've been doing. So you can't go darker than black there, but because it's middle gray, that burning is going to have no effect on the white. So this is a nice way, a non-destructive way to work with it. But what I can do is rasterize the copy of my creature and then I can just burn directly on my creature those highlights where I think it needs them along this back edge. Now I want to do all this work on my puppet before I start posing my puppet, right? I want to make it kind of match the environment. But I can end up overdoing it which is why I always make it on a duplicate to begin with. That's looking pretty good. Then I can go and adjust the levels of my creature, right? Maybe limit the highlights a little bit there. Maybe even brighten them a bit overall. But now those whites are not so shockingly white. So now when I add the overlay layer, the non-destructive, it gives me more believable shadows on top of my creature. Now what I also do is I'll put an overlay layer behind my creature. So I have the overlay that's on top that's burned in with shadows for my creature. And then I have 
an overlay layer that I'm going to set up. I'm going to fill it with middle gray, normal, 100%. And now when I use the burn tool on that, it will be underneath my creature's feet, right? So this is a great way to do shadows underneath your creature. So these are cast shadows, not form shadows. And then I set that to overlay mode. And you can see the shadow under the feet now, more believable. I can also use that for any of the kind of environmental burning and dodging I might want to do. Okay, so now I have shadows for both overlays, but I can also add highlights. So if I use it a little too strong, I want to use less than 30, big and soft. In the midtones, I can also use the overlay layer for limited highlights, you know, from 50%. So let's put some highlights back on my creature. Where would the highlights be? They'd be kind of soft down the core, not so much on the edge. Maybe I want to get a little bit of a highlight on this beak so it shows up a little bit better on that background. All right, and then maybe I want to burn down the rocks a little bit more just to frame my, my character a little bit better. Now, the overlay layers are great for, for dodging and burning. But you see, as I'm burning on the overlay layer, it's really saturating the color behind it. And I can't use the sponge tool on something that's just gray. So I do have to go to the original layer of the background to take some color out if it's getting too intense. And that's way too strong. So I can darken, but I can also kind of selectively desaturate a little bit. All right. So that's basically assignment three, how you play with putting your, your creature into an environment and make it believable using overlay layers. You know, the shadows that go on the creature itself and the shadows that go underneath it. And if my creature is in the water, I could composite a reflection. The other reason I like overlay layers is that I can always dim them in their opacity so they're not quite as strong because dodging and burning are powerful tools that we tend to overuse. But for animation, oh, and then I can use things like texture overlays to further integrate my creature into that environment. You know, have the dust clouds affect my creature just as much as they affect the environment. All ways of kind of fooling the eye into thinking everything fits together. All right, so like that. So that's assignment three that we didn't do. But it helps me with my animation because now I can take these shadows from these overlay layers and make them part of my puppet asset, right? So how do I do that? Well, what I'm gonna do is actually select with the magic wand with a, a really strong feather, so something like 30 pixels, contiguous, all the gray. So first, all the gray in my character overlay layer, which is this. And then I'm going to delete the gray. So it's only overlaying on top of my creature, right? But it's still there. And it's got a little haze around it, but that's okay. That just helps my character to stand out. And now I want to do it for underneath my creature. So I'm going to select the gray with a strong feather, so it's 